Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be reviewing Mageling, designed by Joseph Butler and published by Familiar Games. In a game of Mageling, you are a young mage who is attempting to travel through several locations as quickly as possible. In the multiplayer version of the game, you are racing other Magelings to try to be the first to clear all five locations in the game. However, in the solo slash co-op version of the game, what you're doing is you're racing through these locations in order to save the Evertree, which has a certain amount of mana crystals on it that represent its health, and its health is going to decrease throughout the game, and the Evertree, when it runs out, will die. What's also interesting is that in the solo version of Mageling, you play a whole campaign. So while the first round of trying to defend the Evertree might be simpler, things get a lot more difficult as the game goes on. Gameplay Mageling is actually fairly simple. You just start by rolling your dice. So this is actually a pretty good roll. So in a game of Mageling, what you end up doing is you get to keep as many dice as you want on your first roll. So let's say that I want to keep all three of these. And then you can re-roll as many as you want. So in this case, I got a nice set. I got three of one type of magic and then a pair of another. Each symbol represents a different school of magic. So here we have two hedge magic dice and three dream magic dice. Then once your dice are rolled, you use your crystal to choose how you're going to deploy the dice. So in this case, I might take all three of these and place them in my focus area. Because when you focus, you can either place multiple dice with the same face or one type of magic die with as many of these finesse hands as you like in order to generate energy. So in this case, because I have three dice of the same type, I'm gonna generate three energy. I could also put these two dice here into the gather section, where if you place pairs of dice, you gain a mana crystal. And the mana crystals are like energy that lasts from turn to turn. At the end of a turn in Mageling, you lose all of your energy, but you can keep your mana. So it's like a long-term energy source. If you have a finesse, which is a dice side with a hand, you can also choose to animate. What animate allows you to do is remove one of the cards from this market row. So if you don't like what's here in the nexus is what it's called, then you can do a little bit of rearranging of the market. There are also special actions on your crystal that you can take whenever you perform the animate action. Once you've done all of your die actions and generated some energy, then you have some choices about how to spend the, those dice and that energy. So the way it'll work in this particular case is that because I focused this particular school of dream magic, there aren't any cards here that I can activate using that. However, I can use my energy, the three regular energy, and if I choose the mana, to pay the cost for one of these cards and add it to my tableau. So in this case, I would only be able to buy this particular card, but I might choose to do that and put it in what's called my grimoire. Once you have cards in your grimoire, you can activate them by putting dice on them that have a matching symbol. So if I bought this card with my energy, and then on a future turn, I rolled a death die face, then I could put it here to activate this card and take the action on it. So energy is used to purchase cards and add them to your grimoire. It can also be used to heal cards. So when you have cards in your tableau, it's possible to get spawns on them that affect your ability to use them. So you can pay energy to heal spawns. And the other crucial use of energy is to move from one location to the next. In this case, the cost to quote defeat this location is eight. And it gets harder from here. So you're going to have to choose how to portion out your dice, which actions you want to take, which cards you'd like to purchase and or activate, and whether you want to use your energy for more cards or if you want to be concentrating on moving from one location to the next. As you go through this deck, there will be a lot of interesting cards that work well in combination with each other. So the game rewards extended play and a study of everything that's in the Nexus deck. In a solo or co-op game of Mageling, another thing that you have to think about in your turn is that every time a new turn comes by, the Evertree loses some of its health and health goes onto these adversary cards up here. Technically in the game, they're called the Ancient Ones. And every time one gets three health on it, so as the Evertree's health wanes, you unlock Ancient Ones who will then mess with your game. For example, this one, Otar, will force you to discard all cards of a certain type for the Nexus and then make each player take some sort of punishment. Meanwhile, as you discover new locations, you get to put this mana onto 
the ever tree. However, you're also going to uncover new potential bonuses and consequences at a new location. So here, this card will force players to either discard a mana or take a wound, while it will also decrease the cost of scrolls of a specific type. So locations often have good and bad consequences to revealing them. So the game is part race, part engine builder, and as you build up your tableau, you will get more powers, you'll be able to trigger more exciting combos, but you also have to move quickly because you're on a pretty strict timer if you want to keep the ever tree alive. The other interesting aspect of the campaign is that from round to round, once you finish beating one chapter of the campaign, then you get to take a card from the Nexus deck for your keep, which basically forms a second market that expands the market that's down here and gives you some cards that you get to reuse in each continuing game of your campaign. So now for some final thoughts. I have mostly good things to say about Mageling. It's one of those games that I appreciate because it reveals increasing depth on repeated plays. Seeing more cards from the Nexus deck, becoming more familiar with the abilities that are available in the game, and then learning how to build great combos is a very rewarding experience. And it's something that I've really appreciated during the plays of this game that I've had to prepare my review. I like games that become richer experiences the more time you spend with them, and Mageling is definitely doing that for me. I think it's really exciting that once you know what you're doing, you're able to set up some really awesome combos so that even though your dice don't seem to do much for you in the beginning, by the later game, you are setting off multiple cards with the dice that you rolled, and it's really exciting. I also appreciate that the dice and the cards in the game are multi-use. So when you roll, you have to decide how to apportion your dice. And so you have to wonder, okay, am I gonna try to buy a card? Am I just going to focus a certain type of die and then activate a card? Am I gonna get something now with my energy in the short term? Or am I gonna still have mana for the long term? And so I like that there are multiple different decisions that you can make in the game. And I also like that making different types of decisions can still lead to legitimate victories. There's more than one way to do well in a game of Mage and so you can also try different play styles and find success in those play styles. The other thing that I appreciate about Mageling is the solo campaign. I think that it might have been too easy a game with just one solo scenario, but playing it as a campaign, especially having to deal with more difficult challenges as the chapters go by, made solo play of Mageling more interesting, more challenging, and more fun. And I think it's the right level of challenge and also the right level of commitment because the campaign in this game isn't so long that it feels like a slog. It's just something to give the solo game or the co-op game some heft. I do also have a few complaints. My first is typical of dice games, which is that sometimes you're just gonna roll badly and you're going to have kind of a dead turn where you can't get very much done. This is especially true if you're rolling dice that don't go with what's currently in the Nexus or in the card market. I also find that in the solo game especially, the market road doesn't refresh as much as I would like. So when multiple players are interacting with cards from the market, purchasing cards from the market, focusing on cards that are then discarded from the market, you see a lot more cards in a game. In a solo game, the only way to really deal with cards that you don't want is to use your animate ability to refresh one on the market row. So you can only change one card at a time during a dead phase. My last concern about Mageling has to do with the rule book. While I was able to eventually get all of my rules questions answered, there's some ambiguities in the rule book that required me to go online, check the FAQ, check Board Game Geek, and generally do some research in order to understand how a specific aspect of the game was played, in particular, the keep in the solo campaign. And so while everything got resolved and I'm now able to play the game without issues, that's something that can really bother me in a game, especially because we frankly live in a world where people buy games, they only play them a couple of times, and then they move on to the next thing. Cult of the New is reality in our hobby right now. And I feel like Majorling is a good game that could have given a slightly better impression right out of the gate. So let's circle back to what I said. Majorling is a good game. I think the gameplay is charming. I think that the gameplay gets better the more that you play. And I like that the designer is committed to the game. I know that there are expansions and further developments for Mage Link that are in the works. So if you like it, it's only going to get better from here. So given the promise that Mage Link has and the enjoyment that I've gotten out of it on repeated plays, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 and a Dice Tower seal of approval. I had a good experience with it, despite a few minor flaws. Happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast 
or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.